hello, my fellow car modelers. How you doing today? Uh, again, I sit down at the bench about to do something, and I go, why don't I make a video and bring my friends in on this, man? It's something cool to show you. So, what we're going to be doing today is I am working on my demo model for my new uh, Grand Am nose that fits on the Pontiac Le Mans put out by Salvino's JR. And I finally made a decision of what car I wanted to do. I wanted it to be white and I want this to be ready for Vegas. I'm going to have it on my display table. Come on over and talk to me and say hi if you're going to the Vegas show. You know, I wanted to show you some cool taping off technique I got that I know a lot of people have problems with. And when I show you the car I'm going to do, I think you guys are going to find this interesting on how I go about and masking it off to make room for where decals lay and everything. Because we're going for a two, two kind of a two-tone paint job. So let's... Uh, Let's get into this, but you know, not until this is over. So the car I've decided I'm going to do was a car that w was ran by both Jeff Bodine and also Tim Richmond in the Bush Grand National Series running for Hendrick Motorsports, and the car was in the Levi Garrett livery. It was probably one of the nicer built. Uh, I don't know if I'm correct, but I'm pretty sure it was a car built or at least skinned by Robert G. I'm not 100% on that one. Please, if you know, put it in the comments. I love that kind of uh, technical, I love the technical history of NASCAR. I like to spew it off a lot on here. And, uh, but Robert G was really known for sportsman cars. Um, you know, he was, he was, uh, you know, a part of the Earnhardt. He was a relation to the Earnhardts and, and there's a lot of connections there. If you pay attention to like Dale Jr. talks about him all the time. And, uh, he was just a great race car builder. But anyways, so I was very torn on what car I wanted to do. I wanted to be a majority white. Originally I was going to do, I was going to do a Bobby Ellison car that he ran, uh, they kind of shared the car with his son Davey, and I had a picture of it with the 22s, and it was the the Miller Buick, which I would have just had to put just decals. I painted it white, we'd be done. But it wasn't sitting right with me, because I honestly, that car, I, I was just being, I was beating myself up on it. There was a lot of reasons why I didn't want to do it that car, and I already have a ready-made chassis, and it really wouldn't have worked for that particular car. But this car, from all the pictures I've seen, I can't find a lot of pictures of it, is it had a black chassis. Probably wasn't a, a more than likely, it wasn't a, um, what we call a front steer Laughlin chassis. It was probably a rear steer banjo chassis. More than likely, evidence I see of that car. So the chassis isn't correct, but we're not splitting hairs here. Most people don't. Um, I'm only the maniac that likes to make things so freaking correct when I build my cars. When I build my NASCARs, I lose my mind with that stuff. But it's, I enjoy it. I lose my mind with a smile. But I don't push it on anyone. Anyways, but for, I may one day build my own chassis for this car. But it's going to be a black interior chassis. This is a pretty important chassis. I'm not going to get into it. I actually had to do a lot of repairs. Would you believe this thing went through a house fire? This whole upper cage here is all rebuilt because it was all melted. I don't even have a steering wheel on it yet because the steering wheel was melted. But uh, it's very important to me that this chassis is going to be under this car for now. Again, that's just one of my chassis I, I have for, for kind of just um, display models, which this what this is going to be. But I'm digressing. I'm, I'm going way off. You want to you see what we're doing here. So the trick about this the Levi Garrett car it had, you know, kind of a it's simple, but it can get tricky to get all the angles right. So the whole front here is yellow, and it had a brown stripe that came like a chevron down the car. We want to get these angles right because the decal sheet that I end up picking up, which a power slide, not going to lose. I wanted this sheet, and I went over to Mike's to buy it, and he is all out of them. And luckily, I found this on the wonderful eBay that. Last resorts, if I got to, I go there. Normally, I don't like to. But I, I had Levi Garrett decals, but they didn't have the white. 
that I need for the hood on this particular car, the white Levi Garrett. And I really didn't feel like painting this stuff. I just wanted to lay decals. I just want to paint yellow and get on with life. So the rest of it, it does right. As a matter of fact, everything I can see of the three clear pictures I have of the car I'm kind of trying to replicate is it had Jeff Bodine written like that, I think. If anybody has pictures of this car, please hook me up. Any knowledge about this car? I actually maybe one day might even build my own chassis for this and really make it a, a car I might want to take to shows one day. So I want to make everything as accurate as possible as far as doing the body. But this kit, this sheet is just so spectacular. It's got everything I need to do whatever freaking Levi Garrett car that came out of the Hendrick stable in those years. But here's what we're doing. The trick is these stripes to be able to mask off to where I can lay those stripes down and not get messed with. <laughs> so what we have is basically you look at the stripe like this. We look at the car like that. That's going to have to go on there. This yellow is towards the back. There is a white pinstripe here. So there's a white pinstripe that separates the brown from the yellow that we're going to paint. So you want to get a nice perfect line right there that you will lay this decal down and it'll, it'll blend everything together. The trick is to figure out how you can get all that down and be able to get this taped off correctly and then the correct angle you're off a little bit this way or that way when you tape this it's you know you might be able to hide it with laying your decal down but I want to get it to where the line is going to go right where I'm dropping that that white pinstripe which of course this line right here is the driver's side line and you see there is definitely definitely an angle we got to go with so this is what I do which I already I wasn't thinking of making a video I'm just going ahead and doing model building and not thinking of you guys and that's where I was wrong if I said that I would have been wrong I used my head I thought about it and I went hey wait a second my friends I want to show you guys so I basically this paper that comes in uh, decals is perfect for doing something like this because it's tracing paper and look what look what Luca did do a little trace. Can you see that? Just the lines that are important. The the line that is basically where I'm going to be taping off on the body to tape off the body where I want to keep it white, which would be for this side, be all that. And I'm going to want to draw a line right down on the body right there. So I made a template. And I'm going to cut this out. And it's going to show me exactly where I want to go. So let's get cutting it out. Which side does that tape go on? Well, I know for this, this is the hood. I, I, I don't know if you can see it well. I'm going to want to use this as a template to lay down my tape. You got to think in... I'm, I'm, I'm bending my mind right now thinking. Because I immediately want to cut this out like that and use this as a template. And keep the paper here. That's not what I want. I want to keep the paper here. And, and I'm thinking, this is not a mask, this is a template. So I got to go reverse of what I want to mask. Oh, this is bending my mind. What I'm going to do, nice sharp blade coming up, but I got to get right there. And we are going to go, ooh, ooh, ever so. Slicey. And then I'm going to go like this. Also, it doesn't help that I'm an old man who can't see for nothing. Slicey. And there we go. I have... Yeah, okay. So we're good like that. rest, I'm going to go ahead and cut this out. I hope... I hope I got everything nice and straight. Okay, remember, this is just a template. It's not a mask. Here's the silly part that happens. So we want to go across this thing. Now, something we got to look at. The thickness of this. Now looking at the pictures of the car, this right here, this yellow right there is an important point. That pretty much comes right up to the A pillar. You want it to come right to the A pillar when you lay that decal down. You want the yellow 
stripe coming right here. All right, so Papa. basically we're looking at, I'm just, I don't know what these measurements are. I'm, I'm just using the lines, so I can't really say, let's see what it is, 25th scale. This is, this is a scaling thing, it's not really a ruler, but from what I can see, The mark before the two, I don't know if that's in millimeters because it's actually 70 second scale feet. In 70 second scale feet, it's just under two feet. But it comes right to that mark right there, just as long as I had something to go by. And that means if I do this, I want that to go right there. It looks like right there. So that's really about where I want. So that's pretty much where I want my place to be for where I mask. So I'm just going to stick a piece of tape right there for now so we got it marked. Now we got to make sure it's all in the up and up because of course I ripped the corner off there. Uh-huh, is right. Let's take a look on this side. We've got it to where... Oh. Yeah, see, it's not even close. Mm. And sometimes it's just, you got to do a lot of eyeballing. It's just a whole lot of eyeballing. Eyeball. That's right, eyeball. And just keep measuring and make sure you get it to the right spot because it is really important. This is probably one of the most important parts of doing this whole paint job, is getting this all masked in the right area. Papa. Yeah, buddy. He wants to help me measure. Help me measure. Put your hand right there and help me measure. Thank you. Oh, I blew it. Yep, so much for that. Yeah. Got to start over again. This can be tedious, so what I'm going to do is, <laughs> off film, because I'm like sweating now and nervous, I'm going to get everything measured, I'm going to get this laid out before I start laying my tape, and we'll be right back and I'll show you, so, mm, good time for a commercial, check this out. You're watching the Lucas C channel on YouTube. Oh boy, uh, you can see everything's all, whew. this was, uh, whew. so, what I have done is I have placed the all these points here of where it, I have a little red dot. I've laid this tape down more to be able to put that little red dot. That is exact center of the hood. That's where I know where my point has to be. And of course, these are taped right where the exact location of where I want to start my tape line to mask off all this to stay white and me able to paint this yellow. Let's take a look here. Puts this right in the center. We are looking at, whoa boy, this is stressful. Right about there, I am going to lay some tape down and get this set. It might not be perfectly set, but we gotta get that laid down to make sure everything is groovy. This is my template to lay my tape down. This is not, I'm wanting to have all this open to paint this area, not to uh, tape off. Uh, this gotta be masked. This has to be open to be painted. That is where I want my tape line. Now I am using some fine line tape that I, this is basically 3M fine line tape. This one kind of troubles me because Whenever you get fine line tape, and this is the same stuff you get the Tamiya stuff, the fine line. This is the best stuff to, you know, you got a perfect edge for masking off. I mask everything off with fine line tape. And again, I got a couple different colors. There's uses for the colors, believe me. Um, what I like about the orange is it's a little bit, you know, you can see through it. It's translucent. Where the blue is dark you can't see through it so this is really nice when you're doing lines and you want to really follow something you can see the line you're taping where you want a little bit of an overlap or something you can tape along a line you're trying to follow really good with these problem with this is whenever you have this stuff always keep it in a sealed baggie and whenever you're doing stuff 
always make sure you lay it down on a clean surface because you see how this stuff starts to pick up little fuzzes and hairs and stuff and that'll that'll show up you can even see it on these right there a little bit of hair and stuff gets caught on the edges and that can mess a paint job up so quite honestly this is kind of a ruined piece so um, I don't think I'm going to use this for my taping off I have this fresh one in here that I have been saving for a while that I think I will use and try to keep this thing in perfect condition alright so here we go it has been liberated from its package very sticky on the sides it's like super sticky almost like I hate how sticky improved adhesion now you got to be careful this stuff will pull pull your paint off if you didn't have your paint on there really good one thing that I will do and whenever you pull these off this is very stretchy which is a good thing that can work into your advantage but you don't want to rip this off at all I'm kind of gonna snip it off because you want it to be stretchy if you're gonna be doing things where you gotta you know this is used for making really curvy stuff you know you tricky whatever I'm trying to say you want it to be able to stretch and bend on on things I'll probably do a video on using this stuff I've just ruined this one because I've stretched it so it's now no longer perfectly straight but look at how you can really get a nice bend like that but I won't use this piece so you don't want to just pull it off like that when you're when you're taking a piece off because it, it will ruin it and then when you go to lay it down it'll slowly start shrinking back into its shape and and mess things up so this is where we want to go I got these in the right place and I'm going to remove these because now they're just going to be in my way let's go ahead and take another piece of the blue this is where you gotta have that third arm installed maybe in the future that's what model model builders will do we'll all have a third arm installed it'd be cool now, what I want to do so we are going to lay that sucker right down again gotta be careful want that to lay straight get that all curvy and mess it all up and when you're doing this I am not putting I'm not stretching at all I'm trying to lay that thing down let's get another piece let's get it over there uh, it's always so awkward And again, when I, while I'm doing this, I am not doing any tension that way. I'm trying to get that thing to lay right where we want it. There we go. We've got that set right where we want it. Little problem that we have is we don't have a good point right there. So we may have to create one. See, I did a bad job. You see that? That's not good right there. I got to get that filled in. I'm going to do some creative work here and just I kind of did a fill in that should be fine and of course you have the decal that will kind of clean up your line that's the whole point of that white pinstripe but I don't like to depend on that there we go now for this side I honestly I want to trim that away now we got our templates this is the one for the right side I'm trying to think how I want to go about this because I just I should have more paper on this side so this is actually kind of where I need to cut alrighty so there is my, my template to take it the rest of the way hopefully and then of course there's a whole lot of looking quite the angle I got 
really get this trimmed in the right spot. Okay, so getting that that stru that part right there masked, you just want to make sure that fits your template and your it stops where your template stops. Because this was a template directly off of these decals. So I want this V to end exactly where this V ends. That way now I can take my side template and get this in the proper spot. And just so you can see what I'm doing. It's all about keep taking your time, man. This stuff is painstaking. And this should lay right where we want it to lay. Right to there. If this thing would stop slipping on me. What I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this excess off we don't need. A little, little more support. You want to make sure that your starting point is very set. Because stuff like that happens and wrecks it all. You blew it! I'm going to go ahead and put my piece of tape on the bottom here because when I get it set, I can get it set. Hmm. Let's see, does that look like the right good angle? It looks like a pretty good angle. We're going to have to go with. Hopefully it all should work. So I've got my little piece of tape here. I'm going to start... Oof. Find my, my first point. I can kind of move it around at. There we go. Get rid of our template. Now, do they meet? Yes, they do. Okay, well, there we go with that. Alrighty, so I think we got our angle we want. This all should work real good. I'm going to go ahead and get the other side done. We're going to tape it up and we're going to shoot some paint on it. We'll be right back. Okay, friends, let's get ready to tape this baby up and get it all ready to rock. Uh, I am going to use just some regular little masking tape. Good stick stuff. I usually like to start with... Uh, taking care of the wheel well. This needs to be all, which I'll be painting under here black after I get the paint job done. I usually like to do that after this is all done and cleared because with the clear, whenever you get any overspray from doing the underside, you tend to be able to get that overspray off really good off the clear pretty easily. Buff it off or however you want to do it. We got that all arranged. I've got these taped up so we don't got any spray coming through here which it, again doesn't really matter that big of a deal all this is going to be taped off so i don't have to put any tape in the windshield area i just need to cover this hole and also remember when you're doing this and say i'm touching this area here be really careful make sure your hands are clean or wear gloves which sometimes i like to have these little cotton gloves i wear but just make sure you don't you don't you, these are nice and clean because you don't want anything lots of times when you have bad reactions t with your paint jobs and you're mad at the paint or your airbrush or whatever you might find you contaminated your surface now there's one little thing I'm going to do I'm gonna take yeah let's take 36 I'm just gonna put a little bit of, of scratches just lightly into where I'm gonna be painting the yellow because you want you want your paint to have some bite onto your surface here that's already been painted the under undercoat paint you, you used or if it's primer you know whichever you got to have a little bit of bite there and, and it, you don't have to really do it too hard if you got these just lightly sanded where, where you're going to be putting your next layer of paint that's going to prevent when you go to pull your paint off you want your 
next surface of paint to really adhere to this surface of paint and not pull up when you go to uh, pull your tape off and then you have that delamination that happens so frequently and everybody hates that so I'm not pressing real hard on it and I'm not really trying to sand through anything just a light scuffing I usually like to do it with the heavier grit polishing cloths because it doesn't put grooves into it and you won't see all them sanding scratches after your final paint I'm going to take a nice clean paper towel I still haven't gotten over to the auto parts store and got my blue towels yet I'm just using a little bit of Windex on here there's better stuff to use sometimes you can just use rubbing alcohol but you got to be careful whatever paint your type of paint you're using but I want to clean this area that we're going to paint just don't want any bad reactions but this should be really good to use since I'm going to be using Tamiya um, acrylic. I'm going to be airbrushing. This will not affect that. You shouldn't have any bad reactions when you're just using water base. And that's pretty much all that. Uh, get, it, get it dried off real good. That's pretty much what, what uh, um, Windex is. It's just water and ammonia water base. So we got that area clean. Didn't get it long enough, so all nice and taped up in those areas. Now, I always like to keep the junk mail because it's kind of a newspaper type. I like using newspaper, but nobody gets the newspaper anymore, so this stuff's always coming in the mail. Get me a piece of this. Let's see how far. I think we can do that. That'll work. Alrighty. And I'm going to go ahead and just go from that end to that. Yeah. There we go. Fold that under there. If it doesn't quite, I still got a space right here. I got to fill that all in. That's all okay. Just get that tape down real good. The rest of this, I just fold this all under and, you know, get it all underneath there. Just get that taped down there so that we uh, come back up on us. Close up all the little shiners, I like to call them, where the surface you don't want painted is showing through your mast area. Shiners. Don't want any shiners. So always look around, make sure there's none of your body showing. We got shiners right there. We got to get rid of the shiners. There's a little piece right here. Get rid of this little shiner right there. Shiner gone. Shiner be gone. I'm probably put a little bit there. You want to do a good overlap, but you don't want to, want to get to your edge right there because your fine line is your edge. That's really important. This fine line tape is beautiful for your nice, clean paint edge. You get a lot of bleed through. You ever see that bleed through when you have an it's not quite a nice crisp line. There's little runners going. It's lots of times because you use your this as your paint, and you make that your paint line right there. Well, if you look at masking tape, your general masking tape, you see how it's crinkly and stuff like that? Well, it's not a perfectly, it doesn't lay down perfectly flat, and paint will get in between those. And that's why you have your uh, fine line tape. It's nice and flat and smooth and perfect. If you don't have fine line tape, something I've used where I've had a beautiful edge, scotch tape. Scotch tape does real good. All right. So let's make sure we don't have any shiners. I'm take some paper here.
kind of create a barrier here. Start it right there. And just work around it. Just kind of fold it up in there. I'll just I need to put a little tape down there. Take care of necessary coverage or, you know, no shiners, right? No shiners. That'll keep the paint from getting too much underneath there. There we go. We're ready. I'm going to set up for paint. And uh, but before we do that, I want to go over something with you. Check this out. All right, so I have in the past had, you know, colors mixed, you know, to be perfect. And there's been some, some companies that make proper colors and all that stuff that are color matched to these race teams and all that. Well, I just want to use, I'm going to do it real easy, I just want to use the Tamiya acrylic paint. They have lemon yellow, was the closest one. Let's see how close mellow, uh, uh, mellow, yellow, mellow, mellow, lemon, yellow, yellow, lemon, yeah. Or as BG would just call it, X8. And we're going to take a look at this and see how close. Now you see I've got my plastic here. I got the thing in the plastic envelope. Let's crack this baby open, fresh from over at Andy's. Fresh new paint. Yeah, it actually looks like it would probably work pretty good. Let's take a quick gander here. Take a little bit of yellow and just do a little passerby. A little test dribbling. You want to, you don't want to paint it because you want to um you know you don't want streaks in there you want it to be thick you also got to wait for it to to dry i was actually thinking i was going to have to add a little bit of red or orange orange this up a little bit but it looks like it actually is slightly darker i am not a wizard believe me i am not a wizard of voodoo mixing Nine times, out, well, ten times out of ten, I'll blow it completely out of the water trying to mix my own color. Because, you know, I just, I'm not good. Kind of hoping that we can just go with this color. It's actually looking like the Tamiya is a little darker. I, th I really think it's going to be close enough. Quite honestly, looking at that, I, I think we're going to be okay. And it might lighten up a bit, and that's the whole reason why, you know, I've got a white surface. I'm, I'm painting out my, my undercoat's going to help me. Just go with that color. And you see, keeping it on the plastic there, that's how you can kind of color match your decals. Keep it in the plastic. Okay, so I'm all set up to do my painting. And I am going to get a nice, clean little measuring cup here. I'm going to go to the 5 with paint. And what I want to do, I want to start off with probably about a 60-40 um, kind of a mix. I love these little little things here. Pouring, it makes messy messes. So I'm going to go ahead and fill that up to the 5 mark. This is probably going to be plenty of paint to paint that whole nose area. So... If I wanted to go 50-50, I'd take it up to 10. That's 50-50. We want to go a little less than that. I think I'll, using the Tamiya X20 thinner, acrylic thinner. I just like to keep brands to brands. Nice, clean, perfect little tube here. I'm going to bring this to probably the 7.5. That will probably thin it just right for me. And 7.5, you got 5, then 7.5. We'll see how it looks. I'm kind of thinking it's kind of thick. So maybe we'll go 50-50. So at this point, I'm going 50-50, which is pretty, that's a pretty safe mix right there. 50-50. Eh, I always like to take it and do a little drip on the edge and see how thick it is and how it rolls down you just kind of look at it I think 50-50 will be good if it doesn't shoot well now well, we can always put a little more thinner in it now I'm gonna go ahead and fill up my brush now I'm using an Iwata Neo it's got the biggest tip I think it's a 0.5 and I'm not sure this is my my one with the biggest tip where I paint bodies so I get a nice good 
spread of a fan. We're just filling the cup. Alrighty, so put this in a safe spot where I won't knock it over, hopefully. And I put my cap on. And we're ready to shoot. My air compressor is running a bit, but uh, let's get some down. I'm only going to pull back on my trigger just a little. And just kind of get a light coat on here. The undersides. on this and you know no need for you guys to watch all that it's a little boring you've seen guys paint a million times but it's all about taking your time it looks a little streaky right now but that's just my first little tack coat that's a good little first coat there so I'm gonna continue on with what I'm doing it's a little difficult to you know make sure I'm getting in in the frame here but you see how I do so I'm gonna go ahead and put a few more coats on this and we'll be right back Okay, there we go. It's been a couple hours since I painted, put about three or four coats on it. And I think we got good coverage. Let's go ahead and unmask it. like we had any come over into the white. That's a good sign right there. Looking good. Looking good. We didn't have a lot go in the inside. That's good. Okay. Let's see how our line looks. Pretty good. Doesn't look like we have any yellow going into the white. A little bit of stickiness. And there we go. Doesn't look like any yellow came came through, but I do have some some schmutz right there from the the tackiness of the right there. It's a little bit of residue from the from the uh, tape, which is easy to take care of. And there's a little right there, which I'm going to wait till this this paint fully cures and then I can kind of buff that out but that's how you tape all that off and get a nice straight line 
and it should follow our decals. So I'm going to clean it up, I'm going to clear it, we'll put the decals on, we'll get going to the end of this and I'll bring that up in another video. But for now, that's how you do all your taping off and, and get your proper angles and have a nice clean line to work with. So I want to thank you all for watching, hope maybe you learned something, who knows. And uh, well, you know what we say here, we love building model cars, why? Because they're fun. Here's the producers.